we don't do things for the sake of doing things that like, let's solve this problem just because it sounds cool on paper. The day we launched, immediately our train transactions 3x in a week or so. And then our CTC came in and said, you are not allowed to do this, shut us down. <laughs> Boss told me, spent one week just customer calling people. And I was like, kya de ro? Like, I was thinking something much more glamorous, karunga yaha ke. <laughs> what I've noticed is customer calling works beautifully. I like truly value that thing he forced me to do. How the apostles took Christianity to everywhere. Uh, Anurag is taking product management uh, everywhere. This is like the third consecutive weekend that he's here talking about uh, product management. Um, he, he he mentioned that there's there's work on weekdays and then there's even more work on the weekends. So we'll, we'll not trouble him much and get into the questions. Um, so Anurag, first things first, uh, congratulations on your stock being almost back to all time high. Uh, Post COVID recovery seems to have been going well. Uh, yes. Absolutely. I wanted to know a little bit about uh, the team that is powering this, right? So um, I, I guess there are almost 100, 150 PMs uh, at Make My Trip. Uh, yeah. I want to understand a little bit about uh, how is the team structured? Uh, how do these 150 PMs sort of report? What is the org chart like roughly? Mm -hmm. So the first thing at Make My Trip uh, PM product uh, group is basically they are structured in different uh, sort of business units or verticals, right? Mm -hmm. For example, uh, fly, the flights BU would have its own flights product team, which again would be subdivided into let's say domestic flights and international flights because the uh, the dynamics, the landscape, the supply landscape, the consumer mindset is very very different, right? Similarly for hotels, for holidays, right? Then we have a ground transport team which uh, which basically is responsible for trains, bus. Uh, other ground transport products, right? Uh, so that's one key feature of being part of the product team at Make Matter, right? Uh, the other part is there are a few horizontal teams as well. Like my team is one of those, right? So we take care of uh, some of the common sort of infrastructural products. So think about the home page, home pages of our apps and websites, right? Think about the loyalty program, think about offers, discovery, right? Think about onboarding and logging. All of those products kind of roll up under me in my team, right? Then there are other horizontal teams like payments, post sales, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? In terms of the uh, so that's that's kind of the overview. Now, in terms of the hierarchy, right? How it sort of uh, starts from the lowermost level. So the lowermost tier would be a product analyst role, right? So for example, I also have a product analyst within my team. Yeah. Right. And then uh, then it starts from an associate product manager level all the way to senior vice president products. Right. And then obviously we do have an exec sponsor also within our leadership team, the chief product officer. Yeah. Now, Make My Trip has experimented with uh, multiple chief product officers as well. So Make My Trip at some point of time tried to do a very BU centric structure, right? Business unit centric structure like flights team having its own chief product officer or hotels team having its own chief product officer. Mm -hmm. But as of now, uh, for all practical purposes, there is some people have exited. So there's practically just one chief product officer uh, mm -hmm. for, in the organization, though he doesn't look at every single thing. The, yeah. There are other teams that are self-sufficient and kind of look after themselves. Got it. So when you have so many PMs in the, in the organization, uh, does the company follow like a certain uh, template of who you are looking for uh, or like you know what are the different types of or what are some different uh, flavors of product managers that do typically come across inside the organization um so yes the 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 flavor of work the nature of work can be different depending on which team you are part of right so for example uh, just giving a very specific let's just take the example of hotels for example right so within hotels, uh, you obviously need a seller side platform, right? Similar to how Amazon is a seller side platform, right? We need a seller side platform that is exposed to our hotel partners, right? That's the supply, right? Then obviously you have the consumer side flows, the app, the website, etc. Right? So the dynamics of obviously someone who is managing a seller side platform would be very, very different from someone who is managing the app and the website. Yeah. There could be specific PMs looking after specific sub verticals, right? So for example, within hotels, obviously homestays and independent accommodation is kind of coming up in a big way in terms of the evolving customer landscape, right? So obviously then obviously you have PMs or specific product leaders specifically looking after the homestays and independent uh, villas product, right? There might right. be PMs looking specifically after pricing, right? Or for example, specifically looking after hotel recommendations, 
right? Or how you are ranking the hotels on the search results page, right? So there are probably people looking after specifically recommendations, pricing. So so the flavor can be very very different, right? Uh, in terms of the actual work that people do, having said that, eventually <clears throat> the all these products basically exist to serve a certain purpose, right? So for example, you're trying to solve the hoteliers problem, or you're trying to solve the consumers problem. Right? Yeah. So eventually whatever core hypothesis you're building, right? To, uh, to sort of roll up a certain area that, Hey, let's work deeply in the, on the ranking problem of hotels. Ultimately it has to solve a consumer problem, right? So the first and foremost thing that we look for is basically a, a very consumer centered mindset. Are you able to sort of set up, are you able to identify good large problem areas that will help simplify the life of the customer, right? And then maybe then you want to over index in a certain area, right? That, hey, I love recommendations. I love ranking. I love the data science part of it. So I want to pick up this part of it or I yeah. want to pick up the pricing part of it, right? But end of the day, the good part of being part of make matter product team is that we are very, very customer obsessed. We are very, very customer centric. We don't do things uh, for the sake of doing things that, Hey, let's, let's solve this problem just because it sounds cool on paper, right? Mm -hmm. Ultimately end of the day, you are looking for conversion impact. You are looking for GMV impact. You are looking for profitability, uh, bottom line impact. And that is something that's been the core DNA of make matter product or in general, the organization for the longest time. And I've spent uh, like a couple, this is my second stint here, so I know this for a fact. That yeah. if you're doing things for the sake of doing things, that will not go down well uh, with your leadership team or your stakeholders. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned that this is your second stint. So uh, between those two uh, zones uh, of work, what has been your observation about the differences in how the team functions, uh, in how they approach problem statements inside the company? Yeah, so... Uh, when uh, uh, when I when it was my first stint at Make My Trip, uh, things were very very different back then, right? Uh, when I had started off, there were no there was no mobile products uh, per se. There were no, there was not there was no mobile huh. products. Before that's a first. that's a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago, right? So you can imagine how old I am and how much time I spent <laughs> at this place, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I started my career at Make My Trip in twenty twelve. Right. Uh, and it started off interestingly, it started off in, 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 I actually spent a year in, in, in marketing on the marketing side, doing paid marketing, right. That's mm -hmm. where I met Rohit who is on the call. So, uh, so that was also a very interesting sort of experience. And then I shifted over to product. I wanted to be part of product for some reason. They felt that, uh, basis or uh, let me put it out plainly. Maybe I bombed the product interview, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the fact maybe this guy is good with numbers maybe not so much of a product manager right now so let's push him uh, towards analytics towards marketing right i never doing one year there and eventually I said no this is not my calling uh, i love doing the numbers it was a great uh, great learning experience for me in terms of it was my first expo exposure to internet business at scale right so in a way it was good it was a good sort of introduction to the organization but eventually i I put my feet down and said, look, I have to do product. If I want to continue being part of the organization, thankfully make my trip listen to my uh, <clears throat> request. And they, uh, yes, they have a couple of internal product wants, but eventually I was shifted into the product role. So, sure. so <laughs> good investment on their part, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> so back then it was still a very, like, at least for personally for me, it was a very zero to one journey, like I said, right? Uh, I got into the product, uh, mobile product team. Uh, that was again, something that I asked for that. I have to specifically do mobile products. Thankfully it worked out for me. And back then it was more like, yeah, make sure that, uh, some of the good stuff that we already have out there on web, let's make sure that's available on mobile also. Right. In fact, mm -hmm. my first experience running mobile products at make matter was actually, uh, nativizing the apps, right? So we actually had hybrid apps prior to that. And that was also done by, a fantastic predecessor of mine, a uh, great friend who is now at Meta London, right? So he had launched the hybrid apps. When I went in, he was kind of moving out and I had to actually work on shipping out the native apps. It was a great learning curve for me because back then no one, like just to give you an example, right? Uh, when you do web analytics on web, it is very different from how you do it on apps. Now imagine it is 2012, 2013 and 
people have still not shipped like probably there are very few companies in india who have actually shipped out native mobile apps i'm yeah. trying to a third party <laughs> analytics instrumentation i am trying to understand how that is going to work on the android and ios platforms right mm-hmm. so thankfully I, uh-huh. I had spent a fair bit of time in the tech world before i went over to the dark side and went for my mba so <laughs> <laughs> so thankfully i i understood those co- fundamental constructs i was able to uh, like actually write out a requirement document that would work for my developers right because my developers don't understand what adobe analytics is if i tell them hey just go out there and uh, instrument these events they would they would come back and ask me like boss what are you asking for i don't understand what what a evr or a prop is that like getting into the nuances of analytics but so i had to actually read all the technical documentation convert into a prd that was consumable right so all those kind of all that kind of learning curve happened for me right even fundamental questions like the entire organization saying we need to build a mobile first experience i'm like what the hell is mobile first i really don't understand what mobile first really means and first def- have a personal definition of mobile first for myself like what exactly when the entire organization is making a, a war cry saying let's go mobile first boss batao to say what is mobile first i i really don't <laughs> understand this shit because this is the first time i'm doing pming and i was feeling a lot of pressure so yeah. i had to, like act, actually had to carve out personal definitions for myself like in my mind what is mobile first how do you yeah. do things in a mobile first way so yes a lot of learning happened but it was primarily zero to one <clears throat> now next time when i came back it was a completely different sea change i actually had to adapt my product management style because what had happened after make matter but gone to in movie then i had worked at hotstar primarily all those journeys were zero to one journeys only yeah uh, when i came back to make my trip the vision had 100x now there was the super app vision uh, back then there were probably 6 7 lo- uh, lines of businesses it suddenly exploded to 20 lines of businesses uh, a lot of good work had been done uh, in between when i was not part of the organization so a lot of personalization work had been done all right but now the entire problem was like the zero to one is done how do you kind of the low hanging stuff is all done how do you keep coming up with fresher ideas more nuanced ideas right how do you keep pushing the envelope and mm. it was a it was a lot of learning for me also personally yeah like so yeah so second time around and that is how the entire landscape has changed for pretty much all the pms right now like if you come join make matter today you are basically trying trying to ounce the last five drops from your thumbs up bottle right so that's how uh, tough sometimes it can be where like pretty much all the baseline work has been done You, yeah. you keep looking at your product and saying, "Ab bacha kya? What do I what do I build next?" Right? Yeah. And yet you have to keep keep coming up with a roadmap every quarter that makes sense. That can be really really tough at times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the next time or the second time around that you joined in that uh, when you already knew what mobile first was and then expanded yeah. beyond. Uh, so uh, you mentioned like you know. trying to juice out the last five drops of the bottle so uh, like travel is a fairly mature setup uh, the products have matured there are clear competition there's like it's already sort of out there yeah. uh, so couple of questions uh, maybe you can club them together um, what has it actually taken uh, for make my trip to actually get there uh, and maybe you know a second question related to the uh, to, to the first one is uh, what is something that you have loved building while you were at make my trip yeah so like i said right make my trip is not one of those product organizations where the product is completely aloof from the revenue numbers the business numbers right in fact when uh, when i was doing my first stint at make my trip product was actually responsible for revenue numbers as well there was no revenue product split right mm. so in that sense it was like a complete t6 t60 kind of role within the organization it was really really enjoyable right because every quarter not only you are presenting your product metrics you are also presenting how those product metrics are actually rolling up into the actual transaction numbers conversion numbers retention numbers etc etc so and and so while uh, as the organization has matured the split has actually come in right now we have a, a separate revenue team right a separate business development team etc etc still that fundamental sort of uh construct has remained right that we will do things only if it moves the needle materially on some core metrics that we care about right? yeah and and the metrics can start getting level 2 or level 3 right so again again going back to the holders example it be easier for the audience to understand so let's say uh 
five years back, people were looking at, let's say, conversion numbers for a hotels fund, right? Today, it would have gone down to the level of what is the conversion number for? I'm pretty sure they were looking at it earlier also, but today the target would look something like, let's improve the conversion number for leisure destinations by X percentage. Let's improve the conversion number for business destinations by Y percentage. Let's right. improve the conversion number for, uh, let's say, budget range phones by X percentage. Right. So you you keep going down that funnel, keep eking out, uh, keep eking out slices where you feel there's still headroom, right? Yeah. And it it keeps getting worse and worse, <laughs> like right. So you you <laughs> then then it's like okay, let's improve the uh, new user conversion for leisure destinations. <laughs> by X percentage, right? So in some sense, you are right. almost looking down the barrel. You are trying to eke out every single bit of efficiency that you can, right? Yeah. And so it, it it kind of, you keep kind of going in and and you know that if you improve this number, obviously your revenue numbers, your GMV numbers will go up, right? right. So you, there is definitely some source of truth that you look at. Then you link it, link it to other sort of advanced metrics, like what's your six-month retention looking like? What's your 12-month yeah. retention? Is it making sense for the BU? Right. So, for example, in, in a vertical like trains, you are probably gunning for three month retention. Right. In, in a BU like hotels, probably you do leisure travel every six months or six month retention. Right. Yeah. So, different teams have their own sort of success metrics and they try to stay as truthful as possible to those numbers. <clears throat> right. So, this is what it is taken to get to where you are right now. Uh, yes. Story of yeah. So, from a now. business perspective, uh, that's definitely one thing. Uh, and and kind of uh, so that's definitely one thing. Like like if the organization uh, were to sort of look at numbers every millisecond, they would. That's like one crazy thing about make matter. Like sometimes it becomes too much personally, even for me, right? Uh, like you walk into a review with uh, with with the CEO of the organization, and he can ask you numbers like these. So you are, you are supposed to remember these numbers by heart. Like if you if you don't remember these numbers, then obviously. Uh, you're not doing a good enough job, right? So that's one thing. The second thing from a macro lens, right? So this is ob obviously the micro optimization part of it. If I look at it from a macro optimization part part of it, I think Make My Trip is very good at understanding customer trips and picking picking up what trends to invest at what point of time, right? Yeah. I'll again give an example again. So uh, Make My Trip invested in uh, homestays and independent accommodation back in. 2015 16 time frame also but it didn't, didn't play out right so mm. they decided to shut it down they thought that maybe now is the time given that back then in 2015 16 the airbnb had started becoming material and they had started yeah. attracting a lot of attention so make matter also felt key let's do this might work out even in indian market but they realized that the indian market is very different because uh, in an, uh, if you go kind of go to youtube read some interviews or listen to some interviews by the they uh, like make matter figured out that you know what people don't really have second homes and third homes uh, in India who they can basically let it out right so they decided to shut down that product saying that this is not working out right now right then again come COVID the customer trend started changing and they again reinvested in that product and kind of uh, just shipped out that product in whatever record six months or whatever right uh, launched a completely new funnel, funnel completely from scratch again in six months and this time they are fully invested in. Like there's a separate team looking after homestays and villas. It's being tracked as a separate segment altogether. And they're specifically looking at room nights specifically for that particular segment, right? So right. Make Matter is very good at picking up trends. Uh, and, and that kind of comes uh, some, in some way directly from the founding team itself. Like right. they are very good uh, at understanding customer trends. They are as customer obsessed as probably some of the uh, frontiers of the organization, right? A yeah. lot of times you would... <laughs> be blasted by them saying that, why didn't you think of this idea? And clearly there's this trend playing out in the market, right? So both from a macro and a micro perspective, I think we do well, right? Yeah. So the macro kind of picture kind of keeps telling you that you now keep looking at the market, keep looking at the trends, keep looking at what is playing out in other markets, right? So for example, uh, we, we very actively look at what is playing out in China, what is playing out in US, right? And then try and see whether yeah. there is likelihood that the same thing will play out here as well, right? So that's yeah. one thing. And then the other thing is when you commit to the cause, right? And decide that I have to build this, you go very deep trying to understand what exactly is the customer behavior, what exactly <laughs> is their mental model, and then try and build a product that meets the customer's requirements. And it's not necessarily aping what 
an Airbnb has built or what Sea Trip in China has built, you try to figure out what is your version of that product for the Indian customer. Right. right. Do your thing. Um, so you mentioned that the founding team, like, you know, the culture of picking up trends has sort of been formed by the founding team and it seeps down. Uh, I was interested to know, um, like, you know, how has this been institutionalized? Like, how is it that uh, even the younger PMs are empowered to be able to find insights on their own? And what sort of rituals do you have in the team that foster and enable both collection of insights and as well as sharing of insights within the team? Uh, so there are two ways this happens. Uh, again, this is again a good part of working at Make Matter. We have, like, you have access to everyone in the organization, including uh, the CEO and the chairman, right? So you have access to the Prajesh, everyone, right? And so much so that we have, we used to have monthly syncs with Rajesh. Like, imagine having a monthly sync with your CEO, <laughs> right? Uh, so, like, probably one week out of those four weeks, you are <laughs> preparing for that only, right? So imagine how much prepared you have to be, right? And then it happens both ways, right? In those sync ups, maybe Rajesh would come up with three ideas that is going on in his mind, right? Because you have the you have this cadence of monthly sync ups or 45 days sync ups. Obviously, you have this forum where Rajesh is speaking his mind and saying that let's do this. It yeah. makes sense, right? So that's happening. Uh, then what is happening is uh part of being at Make Matter goes with that. I have weekly syncs with my boss, with the chief product officer of the company, right? And then again, there is pressure to present uh, what what did you, like, whatever you are working on right now, how, like, whatever you have launched, how is it working, right? Whatever things are in current execution, you're trying to, uh, you're trying to basically tell him, okay, this is the status, trying to probably demo a few working, uh, working releases, etc. And then obviously in, in, in these weekly things, you are also trying to present fresher ideas, right? Because imagine going to four weekly things and you don't have a fresh idea to present. You are, you are going to get massacred, right? So, so, so the forum, there's so like, this, you have such frequent sync ups with the leadership team, with the very tight feedback loop between the yeah, There's such a tight feedback loop that you are forced to do this, right? And then, uh, yeah, so that 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 is there. And then obviously we have, uh, um, how do I put it? So we have this quarterly planning process, right? Still the organization runs in a very startup kind of mode. You are not really planning for the year ahead. You're still doing it very, very quarterly, right? So <clears throat> every quarter you have to make sure, let's say you are planning for the October, November, December quarter, right? So in July, August, September quarter, the expectation is that by mid-August, at least, you have all the themes, product themes, and some big line items under those product themes identified so that you can sort of uh, start getting the... So this means that you have to actually have to have PRDs ready at some high level so that you can start getting into designs and all, right? Mm -hmm. So you actually have to plan like a month and a half in advance for the next quarter. Right? right, so that again becomes like a very tight feedback loop for you to basically make sure that uh, things are happening. Right, and in in this process, what happens is, like, it's it's very very clearly called out that it's not top down that I'm going to tell you what to build. Right, and there's something that I really enjoy uh, being at Make Matter. Uh, you have to keep coming up with newer and fresher ideas, and you have to keep pitching them. And hopefully, if you pitch ten ideas, maybe two or three will stick. Right, yeah. so. You actually have to generate a lot more ideas than you will actually be able to put into execution, right? Which means you are always ritualistically, you are always uh, like running ideas in your mind. In fact, the way I do my product ideas is I always keep the note taking app on my phone ready. Every time an idea pops up in my mind, even a high level idea, I will quickly jot it down because otherwise I will forget the trail of it. And yeah. then I will slowly start expanding, start looking at data, whether it is making sense, start looking at other examples, maybe competitor. there's some some example in US or Europe I can borrow, right? So, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Like you basically, your documentation begins in WhatsApp and then you expand on it in a PRD and like you gather right. your data and then it finally yes. goes uh, for your next quarter. That's how right. it starts. Right. Process begins with an idea and it gets noted down in WhatsApp. Um, you mentioned that it's not just, you. you obviously look at, Airbnb and C-Trip, but you mentioned that a lot of these things need to be innovated again for the Indian market or to be yes. understood in this context. Yes. Uh, can yes. you give me an example of something like that, uh, that has been built for the Indian consumer, keeping Indian needs in mind? Right. 
So I'll give you a very personal example. This is something I did when I was uh, leading the sister brand, Goa Bibo. I was leading the trains product, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm taking this very specific example because trains market in, in India is unlike any other market in the entire world. Dunia yeah. mein koi example hi nahi, right? Maybe maybe China comes a little close, but yeah. other than that, there is no like parallel in the entire world, right? Yeah. So so, so, so the key construct in trains market is that you are always supply constrained, right? Uh, uh, like the number of travelers right. that are trying to travel daily, 20 million travelers traveling daily. I don't remember the exact reserved uh, tickets number, but it's huge, right? You don't have enough supply. People are always on wait lists, especially when they're trying to travel, right? Uh, yeah. In peak season. So what we thought that, you know what, uh, let's solve this problem for the customer. Look, I cannot solve for the wait list problem, right? Because the supply is controlled by IRCTC. It's a monopoly. Yeah. I can't do anything, right? So the only thing I can do maybe is maybe reduce the pain a bit. So think of it this way that you are paying, let's say, 1000 bucks, 2000 bucks just to get into a line. And you don't even know whether the line, that queue or line is going to clear or not. Right? Yeah. So why even block 1000 rupees, 2000 rupees uh, just to sort of stand in the queue, right? Why right. can't it just be a token amount or maybe zero, right? You stand in the queue. So you book a waitlist. So this is what we launched. You book a waitlist ticket on GoIBO. You don't pay any money upfront. You only pay money if the waitlist ticket gets confirmed. Interesting. Yeah. So so that was the thing. Like very India first product for the for the Indian consumer and very very risky because obviously you're taking a lot of credit risk. Obviously you have to pay IRCTC. The ticket is already booked. Right. Yeah. So we're taking on a lot of credit risk. So obviously we had a lot of models and I can talk about that also, but the mindset was very like solid for the Indian customer. The day we launched immediately our train transactions three X in probably a week or so. And then, oh. and then what happens? RCTC came in and said, you are not allowed to do this. Shut us down. <laughs> right. So maybe we were able to run it for maybe a couple of months. It was a very exciting product, at least in yeah. my mind, uh, it yeah. really solved. Like, and we did a lot of customer calls after launching that product, whosoever booked that uh, product. Yeah. And the first thing they told us that you gave us a beautiful convenience because I don't see for a lot of simple Indian customer, even people who are earning 20,000 rupees, even 2,000 rupees is 10% of the monthly salary. Like right. why would you block 1,000, 2,000 rupees just to get a ticket, which, which, which does not guarantee travel, right? So right. everyone said, I booked on Guaibo only because you offered this. Right. But then, yeah. So the numbers were going great. The credit risk was in control. But yeah, yeah. ICTC there's said a, there is a lot of pain in the story. <laughs> <laughs> I can sense the pain. <laughs> it is. Very oh, interesting. Uh, I I I was I was wondering where was this like because I hadn't come across this. So clearly got shut yeah, down. Yeah, it, but... it was there for uh, let's say a couple of months, three months, and then we were forced yeah. to shut it down. Yeah. Uh, how do these things uh, get conceptualized? Is it generally uh, like talking to customers, looking at data, industry insights, looking at competitors? Like, how does it come across? All three ways. Uh, uh, at least what I have noticed personally for myself, I think talking to customers, especially beyond a point, na, looking at data just confuses and muddles your thinking. Like, if you've gone down to that le level, right, where you are scraping yeah. the barrel, right? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes just looking at data does not give you good binary insights that let's do this, right? It's always the data will always stay in the gray zone in a lot mm -hmm. of cases. Mm -hmm. So what happens, at least personally for me, what I've noticed is customer calling works beautifully. In fact, my stint in product management started with customer calling. I joined the team and back then my uh, then boss, Pranav Basin, told me boss spent one week just customer calling people. Yeah. And I was like, Kya de ro? like, what is it? I was thinking uh, something much more glamorous. Ki main kuch karunga <laughs> One week, I just customer called people and I, 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 I like truly value that uh, thing that he forced me to do. It's like, and this is what I do today. Like yeah. if I'm struggling for ideas or my team is struggling for ideas, let you go out there and call a few people. You will get two or three fresh ideas. Right? That's why obviously mm -hmm. one big source. The other big source, like, like I said, right? If we could, we would look at data every millisecond, microsecond, maybe. So we do look at a lot of data and try and see whether there is a story that can be built. Yeah. So that's the second flavor. The third flavor, at least that's a personal hack. Again, I use, I'm not sure how, uh, how much other PMs <clears throat> do it, but I do listen to a lot of earnings calls of other companies. I read the earning call reports, try and see where they are investing and then try and see is, is there a port of it or a version of it that I could potentially borrow in my work stream. Right. right. So it does help me a lot. And I 
don't just look at travel companies i even look at horizontal e-commerce companies right maybe there's something worth borrowing from there also so mm-hmm. that's there and the fourth hack is that's again a very personal hack look at chinese apps <laughs> the chinese version of chinese apps not the english version of chinese companies right so sea trip there's a chinese version of it there's the english version of it i'll painstakingly take screenshots of their individual screens put it on google translate image translate try to see what they're building because the stuff they build is mind boggling like the yeah. english version of the sea trip is like a such a mellow down version that aapko kuch pata hi nahi you will never get to know what they are actually doing in the china market but if you look at the chinese version of their app it it is at a crazy level or yeah there's so, scale and there's china scale so yeah so they so uh, sometimes i uh, uh, i i copy a lot of ideas from them saying ki yeah this is a good way of getting good ideas Yeah. and then try and see if i can do a port of it in the indian context sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but it's a good way of sourcing ideas at least in travel space yeah um like with regards to travel and we we were briefly speaking about transacting customers uh, as um, more people start transacting uh, what are some of the first few products that they flirt with inside the make my trip ecosystem what do they get started on yeah uh, so uh, so uh, i i could give you a simple answer so at a at, at like a blended level obviously flights is still a transport is still the first product that gets booked okay but if i further slice it down and look at cuts i will find that maybe mid range budget phones uh, ground transport is also getting booked and not flights so much right so mm-hmm. i have actually looked at data and i have actually sort of uh, uh, tried to see what is making sense at what level when it comes to booking so when it looks to look uh, when you look at just the icon clicks right there is no difference between budget phones and mid range phones and high end phones right everyone is clicking on all the icons i don't know what they are doing so so, so people so uh, because we go to crazy level to analyze trends uh, so when it comes to icon clicks everyone is clicking everything but when, when it comes to actual bookings the data clearly plays out on mid range budget phones you will typically find uh, the ground transport products the trains and the buses getting booked on on uh, on kind of mid to high end range you have flights getting booked but still today the transport is the is the first product that gets booked by a new user right. very less uh, very small percentage actually starts with a booking ticket and that probably has to do with the fact that uh, in some sense the transport products are commodity products you know exactly what you are going to get with hotels right. there is so much decisioning that is required right so so much yeah. extra decisioning this is a, this is almost like a decision paralysis when you start looking at the hotels product right so obviously yeah. uh, maybe a new user is not very comfortable with it right so uh, there are more people who are yet to transact than there there are transacting right now so there's obviously a argument to be made for keeping things simple and allowing yes. more people to work. yes 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 absolutely we already have a lot of people who have already Aditya, you can come join make my trip team i i don't mind <laughs> <laughs> you're going in the right direction that's exactly how we have been theorizing for the last couple of years yeah so there's simplicity on one side and then someone will obviously make an argument to uh cater to existing market because they are where the money is coming yeah. from yes to build better and more nuanced features and functionalities for them so when you juxtapose both of them together obviously the design team is facing a nightmare trying to keep things both simple as well as complicated so how are those some how are some of those choices uh, navigated uh, in inside the company uh, these days so what has happened today aditya is that with the entire sort of uh, connected trips and that super app vision right uh, and especially with my team being the owner of the home page it has become extremely hard like on one side because we understand our data the best right the home page data the best uh, we are trying to kind of offer differentiated experiences to different kinds of users exactly what you said right but then on the other hand uh, you, if you have business stakeholders let's say someone who is looking after the gift cards vertical like personally i don't even give a damn about the gift cards vertical to be honest with you right but that guy will come and say that, <laughs> that boss my traffic on gift cards is going to go away what will i do right this is not on this that so ultimately what we have agreed on the right middle ground is offer very personalized experiences uh to different kinds of users i'll give very specific examples also so yeah. today what we have done and this is probably make my trip is probably the only travel app in the entire world that does this again uh, i'm not like throwing it in just for the sake of it but 
Yeah. We offer very personalized cards on our homepage. So if you basically go right and do, let's say, a flight search or a hotel search, right? Uh, yeah. or or let's say a ground transport search you when you when you come back to the app you will see a lot of personalized cards for that particular search context that you did right or let's say maybe you made a booking then you will see a cross sell card right so may, maybe you booked a flight to bangalore from delhi will you will see let's say why don't you book a hotel in bangalore right yeah. now these cards are personalized to your search context i am serving specific recommendations basis your past booking history so maybe you like vistara lot so vistara becomes the first flight recommendation using that card Hmm. Not only we are doing that, we are also ranking these cards. So let's say you have <laughs> two different search contexts, right? Uh, hmm. uh, right. So let's say you search for a, one, a particular set of dates and then you search for another set of dates. Uh, I, hmm. I, sorry, this is a wrong example. In this case, I will always reflect the last search context. But let's say you search for Delhi and you search for Jaipur. I will decide which one to rank up, right? Yeah. So the ranking is also happening dynamically and that has also given us an ARPU bump. So again, right. the tank, uh, ranking was not done for the sake of ranking. We actually saw Arkuba. And then there are specific cards that become eligible only when you are in a certain state. So for example, if you are a new user, right? Mm -hmm. For new user, we have an offering saying that, boss, I don't want to navigate through millions of coupon codes that are running on my platform. I mm -hmm. want to give you one single coupon code that will work on every single line of business. And we call it welcome MT, right? Yeah. So that welcome MT card comes only for the new user and is ranked right like right between what we call our primary set of icons and the secondary set of icons right mm -hmm. so that that strip is right out there right in your face right mm -hmm. so the ranking is also changing a the card eligibility is changing b the ranking is also changing depending on the different customer cohorts and the plan is to serve you the right experience at the right time right so even if there is other lob icons taking mind space we still push the coupon code card right below the primary set of icons right so that yeah. your focus is only on the primary icons and on the coupon code ki boss aao book karo khatam yeah drama khatam right so so that's what we do and now now i'm actually going one step further and so again let me just expand this example further there are certain cases where the card might even get ranked on top of the icons so imagine if i find out you are a high intent user and your your chances of converting this particular visit to the app is really, really high. What mm -hmm. will happen is, and let's say you did search flight searches in the past, the flight yeah. recommendation card will rank even on top of the primary icons that we have. Mm -hmm. I have not seen a single app in the entire world. First time we were doing it, I was like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Yeah. Right. The idea didn't actually come to originate from my team. It came from the data science team. Even I had to convince myself that this is worth doing, but this has given us good results. The yes. card actually getting ranked top of the primary icons is working better than this right so <clears throat> that's the crazy stuff now we are going down the path of why even show you uh, uh like the icons itself could be personalized right so imagine you are a user who has never booked trains and bus through me why show you a train and bus icon yeah. there's a lot of pushback but i am trying to push this starter that even the icons need to be personalized to your use case and that is how i am going to kind of solve for that problem that hey you know what show only the right stuff to the right kind of user and yet kind of balance it out by pushing back to my other business stakeholders that boss, I'm not cutting out your traffic because that guy is not going to buy gift cards. Don't worry. Yeah. He's not yeah. going to. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, that's the path we are taking. Very, very cool. So uh, personalization being done based not just on the actions taken, uh, people are taking, but also the depth of their intent, the yes. location that they are on and how mature they have been inside the ecosystem. So Correct. Correct. Put those things together. Uh, yes. I'm guessing that generates a whole set of thousands of possibilities and then based yes. on those particular scenarios, choosing the right experience and using that as a leverage to fight with other stakeholders. Yes, yes. So personalization. I actually start using data science as a weapon against my business stakeholders that boss, yeah. if, if your icon is not going to show up, I don't care because this <laughs> user as per my data science model based on right. his histor historical bookings experience with me, my yeah. chances are that the chances are that this guy is not going to in any case convert. So why even waste that traffic? Like, what are you going right. to get out of that traffic? It's useless. Correct. Um, unfortunately, we are coming very close to our end uh, of the scheduled time because I am having a blast having a conversation with you. I love how candidly you are answering most of the stuff. Um, we'll take a short detour uh, for a split second. I think a lot of people in the audience are uh, people who are trying to get into product management or who have been in product management for yeah. 
a short period of time. So um, if, um, can you shed some light on how Make My Trip hires or how you specifically actually hire for a product manager? What are some things, what are some skills that you look for? I think primarily I'm looking uh, at the junior level. I'm looking for just three things. First thing is, is this guy customer centric, right? Because well, like I, like I told you, right? This is not the time where I can keep coming up with ideas. I don't have a factory of ideas. Like I keep throwing them at my team, right? Yeah. So it's more like it is both ways, right? I will come up with some ideas. My team has to come up with some ideas. Collectively, we uh, divide and conquer, right? So customer centricity, and that's that's been the hallmark of MT's hiring process for the longest time. Like, can you put yourself into the shoes of the user, segment yeah. them the right way, and then come up with some good sort of creative answers, right? So that's definitely one. The other big thing, at least in Make Metrics context, is your data sense. Not just whether you are able to come up with metrics and all. Yeah. Like this happens a lot again in Make Metrics review meetings. I'll, I'll give you a very specific example. So let's say, uh, let's say someone came to me and said, "Ki boss, a new user conversion on flights panel is coming out to be eight percent, right?" And I will immediately tell him it does not make sense. Why? Because the blended conversion of the funnel is probably seven and a half percent, hmm. right? And new user typically converts worse than uh, than a, a more yeah. power user, right? So if the blended conversion is seven and a half percent, the new user conversion typically would be much lesser than seven and a half percent, right? right? So when the user is pulling, when your pro product manager is pulling out data or your team is pulling out data, do yeah. they have that sense in their brain, right? Or are they able to do that triangulation check in their brain that is this number making sense or not, Yeah. right? Presenting wrong numbers at Make My Trip is basically shooting yourself in the foot. Especially bloopers like this, because I'll tell you what has happened to us in the past. Like we were presenting some numbers to Rajesh and Rajesh said, this does not make sense. The gross margin for the entire group is probably 10%. How is your gift cards? <laughs> so the marketing team had come up with some numbers. They hadn't probably looked at it. The gift card gross margin was coming out to be uh, some crazy number, right? And he said, if the gross margin for the entire business is 10%, how can gift cards be at such a number? Right. Yeah. So that that is the inherent DNA of the entire organization. Like things have happened where you pre you yeah. presented some data point on slide one, and then you presented some other data point on slide ten, and slide ten data point was somehow linked to slide one data point through some formula, and yeah. the CEO will point it out straight in your face. Ki boss, this number is wrong. How can both numbers be true at the same time? So that data yeah. sense is very very important, which we check through. Obviously, we have metrics focused questions, but then we also check on the data sense whether the guy is trang triangulating the numbers, et cetera, et cetera, in his mind, right? right? The third thing, again, kind of specific to make my trip is because we started off in, in the era, we are the dinosaur era company, right? We started off in the era where there were no third party SDKs, no APIs, right? Everything had to be built in house. So, uh, and then we have reached a scale where now what, what has happened is, it's not like a tightly coupled system, right? Everything is federated within. So let's say if I have to do something on the homepage of the app, I probably have to touch four different systems within the organization. Maybe the A-B testing system, because you want to do a staggered rollout, maybe the personalization system, right? Maybe uh, the, the actual content of need to have at least decent amount of tech understanding you don't have to have a code level understanding but you need to understand how different building blocks come together and then basically power a product right and that is unique to make matter because we are at a very crazy scale so in a lot of other companies where you are trying to do zero one things are very much self-contained within one team here yeah. the problem is if you have to ship anything you have to go talk to three different teams if i have to yeah. serve a personalized hotels card on my home page i have to make sure it is I have to speak to my personalization team. I have to speak to the client teams. I have to speak to the data science ranking team. And I have to speak to the hotels team because the content for that hotels card is going to come from them. Right. So a lot of stakeholder management and decent amount of tech understanding. I think these are the four pillars. Um, okay. So I'm just making a note of it. So you mentioned uh, being customer centric, having a good data sense, uh, having a good technical understanding and being able to manage stakeholders. So there are four yep. important yes. So uh, often we end up talking with, uh, chatting with a lot of other product folks from different, different companies. Uh, and over a period of time, what we have realized is that inside product management, even though it is 
fairly general list a job fundamentally it boils down to a certain set of skills that are required right so data centric being one of them uh, communication technical understanding product sense etc so we have crunched that down in six key skills and right. we've created a test called kys uh, which is know yourself uh, anyone so often when you're about to enter the workplace you are questioning whether you actually know enough product management to be able to apply right. for the job uh, right. we have one click apply on linkedin so that all naturally means 10000 people apply to one job so it's it's best to actually check whether you're actually eligible for the job or not or whether you have developed that thought process and decision making you know, in your abilities as of now so uh, we have kys test uh, it's free uh, it's on the platform uh, appraise.co you can go and check that out um a lot of companies actually interestingly recently have started uh, asking their own teams uh, existing product managers to uh, take the test so now we also like you know in your report we also give you what are the pms that top companies rated at and where are right. you right now right. that that's pretty cool that's really cool so it'll be cool for existing pms to also go and check that out um uh there's so much that i have to ask like i've been taking we notes. can continue i, I have all the time not yeah so we can continue if you want to continue maybe 10 15 minutes past one also i'm okay all right cool so we'll we'll continue and then we'll come back uh audience is alive and kicking yeah there are most of the people who have started have been here uh just like there is a data oriented approach at make my trip you had appraised we are like okay how many people join how many people are there so my eyes are constantly also keeping a track of who is around and what is happening uh, awesome cool so um okay um whenever you launching something new um so there are a lot of things that you mentioned get india like you know get a indian flavor before they get launched uh, make my trip being the market leader often users would be exposed to these features for the first time on make my trip or make yes yes made for the first time for make my trip in india uh, so how does the audience react to a new offering or how does the indian customer react to something that is new it's a very broad question but i'm looking to know because it's rare to come across individuals who have actually built truly new things for india so how does the reaction to that uh, measure up so there is a precursor to that right uh, whenever i am trying to do something really really radical right uh, as as a pm if i am trying to propose something really really radical or trying to propose a completely new line of business right it goes through a lot of checks and balances it's not easy to kind of just you just throw over an idea and uh, in a in a meeting with rajesh or my boss ankit right and and you get it approved it's not that easy right so you have to do a lot of leg work to actually get the buy in for the idea right which means that you have probably already uh, done like five different levels right the first level is just sizing up the market and see whether it is making sense right and then you are trying to sort of map map it back to the evolving customer preferences etc right then at second level maybe you have already done two three different wireframe level iterations right and then you are trying to show it around to uh, let's say the lack of time you're just showing showing it around internally within the organization or maybe you uh you just got hold of some people somewhere right and then you threw the wireframe at them and just tried to see how they reacted right yeah. third level is actually putting together a high level uh, high fidelity prototype right and then actually getting a customer research agency walking into like get them to recruit users across different different segments which you very feel this this might work right yeah. and that's like one active part of a strategy that just not recruit people recruit let's say uh, like tier one city blue collar guy tier one city white collar guy right so on and so forth right mm -hmm. and then uh, at least the user research method personally that is work for me is that you just throw the prototype right and then try and see how they are reacting without from just give them a high level sort of construct so example a high level construct would be why don't you go ahead and book like a ac train ticket a uh, shatabdi ticket on this right if yeah. you have a working product or maybe on a prototype you say that why don't you just try and shortlist a hotel from this uh, shortlist a three star hotel with a 4.5 yeah. star rating on my funnel right and it's a just a prototype right and then then try and see how the users are react if you put in all of this leg work you will generally not see surprises surprises when you launch the product right so right. so 
that, that is how it kind of works in in a lot of cases in fact it has been pretty painful where you have put in so much work you are pretty much at the end of it and you feel that you have you have kind of solved for all the uh, cases and you have figured out what exactly the product is going to look like for which particular target segment mm-hmm. but then uh, for some reasons maybe the business numbers are not working out right because the business team on the other side the revenue team is trying to put together a financial model right and the project was shut down it right. has happened to me twice over in the last two years, so it's very painful. Like you invest six months of your life just thinking about a problem, and then it does not see the light of the day. Yeah. Right. So once you have done all of this work, typically you don't see surprises. Then, then the strategy on day zero is basically how do you get more and more traffic into this funnel because you already have identified a sizable yeah. market for which this product would work, and you have kind of based on your different user research and prototyping techniques, you have identified also hopefully an experience that might work, right? And hopefully you have instrumented the heck out of every single interaction that the user is going to do on that particular product, right? So obviously yeah. you have post-launch data also to look at, right? And then yeah. you look at it and then you try and iterate and see where it is working, where it is not working. Sometimes even after trying to cover all the base cases, you might still come across situations where your product fails, right? It has happened to us, even with some mega launches, uh, for example, we tried to do our own version of Hotel Tonight. It failed miserably. Right? Yeah. And uh, there the the, the 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 binding instruct that became was uh, the supply didn't come in the way we expected it to. Right? So uh, the, the hotel partners did not set, sort of sign up for it the way we thought they would. And then mm-hmm. obviously it didn't work out. Right? So so that's how this thing works. For right. Us. So uh, mm-hmm. and I have conceptualized and you do your legwork to figure out whether this is viable. Then you um, sort of prototype it on your end, yes. get a yes. company to do your research. So this whole process is basically de-risking your core assumptions. De-risking the launch, yes, absolutely. Uh, getting stakeholder buy-in at each set of steps. So by the time when you are actually about to go live, there are no questions or confusions or surprises at that point in time. Um, when you are um, approaching any any level of product development, any scope uh, or any size of work, um are there is there like a generic um segmentation approach that is followed or does every pm based on the kind of work that they are doing look at it slightly differently so because if i ask you to segment it's a great one yeah yeah no no it is different it is different different teams have their own different approaches for example uh because i look after horizontal products and customer life cycle management or so-called clm is one active part of my chart right so the way i segment my users one Key way I segment my users is completely new users, new user signups, then people mm-hmm. who have never transacted through me, what we call as MT0, people who have transacted once, single transactors are still active coming back to the platform, but haven't made another booking, multi-transactors, lapses, and then MT Black is like the most loyal tier, right? Uh, yeah. People who are eligible for our loyalty program enrolled because they do multiple transactions, right? So that's one large lens that I look at, right? But Let's say I'm trying to do, let's say, an analysis of how can I bump my login rates up, right? Mm -hmm. There, I don't really care uh, about uh, what the customer segment is going to look at. I'm going looking at very intricate funnels, seeing that what is the channel that they're using to log in, how many, what percentage of users are able to log in right Mm -hmm. during onboarding, what percentage of users do it post facto, Uh, then look at what are the login success rates by different channels, right? and uh, what what are the logging success rates on different kinds of handset models? Maybe something is specifically broken on some something, right? So depending on the prompt statement, we don't really, for example, the same uh, MT0 lapses, et cetera, would not probably be used by hotels. They, they are looking at it in a very different manner. Their customer mm-hmm. segmentation is unique to their problem context. I'm personally not, uh, like, obviously there's some standard sort of segmentation that you can do. But in general, what I've noticed is it is better to do the segmentation as for the problem context, otherwise it, it just becomes haywire, right? So, right, right. Uh, someone in the comments is like, "You saying funnels should be a drinking game?" Uh, they didn't say it in those words, but it's it's actually uh, like you know you 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 were talking about you're talking about being data driven and numbers, and it it's very clear in your na- normal vocabulary also that it seeps in. Everything is down to the percentage point. Everything is thought through in terms yes. of funnels. So, uh, very interesting how like you know that. You become your job in some sense. Uh, you become so your job. And and I, I'll tell you, you will even find deep going into some of these CNBC interviews. There also he's using the word funnel. I'm like, I'm not sure whether the journalist at the other end of it actually understands the word. So, 
so you become your job you uh, sometimes i feel probably i become a replica of what my founders wanted like i become like a image yeah. uh, image of what my founders wanted me to be right so yeah. like, like you come to organization uh, to come join make matter the first word you first two words you will hear is conversion and fun <laughs> uh, how does it uh, how does it feel when uh, you open up a competitor and like you know they have pixel by pixel copied something that you've just recently rolled out like how does how fast is the copying mechanism uh, let's say china to india and then make my trip to other competitors and how does that make you feel actually uh, uh, i don't want to take the name but there is one competitor of us who really copies it, uh, us very very quickly <laughs> uh and uh, yeah that happens and uh, sometimes it's the, it then becomes a conversation so in a way it is like honestly i i can't really do much about it right uh, <laughs> like the only thing i can say is that okay it's good to see that the com- competition has copied my ideas or our idea so hopefully that validates what i was trying to build but other yeah. than that basically uh, you you just try to stay ahead of the curve right because you know irrespective of whatever your competition is copying if you are coming up with uh, new ideas and you are trying to are yeah. doing you are trying to do this first principles you know that whatever you launch actually works for your user base when you are trying to copy someone else's idea it's like mm-hmm. ki boss question to kuch aur tha answer to aapne same chipka diya right so uh, you don't even know right because see even within the different brands of make my trip right so we have make my trip goa vivo and red bus the, yeah. the audience is slightly different it's not like i can like just within our sister brands it's not like i build something on make my trip and copy as is copy paste as is on go ibb it is going to work it doesn't yeah right so when it is not working within sister brands of the same company uh-huh. yeah how is it going to work for someone else right yeah and even when we are trying to and it's not like we are the leaders always and uh, someone else is trying uh, sometimes i'm also trying to typeify something from someone else but then again i have to contextualize it right whether it is yeah. making sense not making sense if i just take an idea from a competitor trust yeah. me and i go to my boss or i go to deep or rajesh and tell him boss let's do this because it is already validated the competitor has done it yeah matlab galiyan milengi and i will have to come back that's how yeah. it is going to be right ultimately you have to contextualize it to your exact audience that you are playing with yeah um just a couple of additional questions and then we'll probably wrap up um cart abandon is like a is would be like yeah. a huge part of your matlab of make my trips overall product um how do you tackle it uh, like you know just give paint like some broad strokes for us to sort of think through how that problem statement can be dealt with yeah so uh, two three different ways first way is uh, when the guy was going first time do through the uh, the guy was going through the process did he face any friction or are there friction points that i can solve for right so for example give you a very simple example even though it was done way back like when it, when you are trying to find a flight are you wedded to a certain date or are you flexible with respect to your dates right so maybe i throw you a fair calendar widget on top a strip on top so that you are easily able to navigate through the different dates mm-hmm. and hopefully if let's say you were looking for let's say uh 20th of august and the the fares on that particular day were high hopefully you were able to find another flight two days later which kind of fit in your budget right yeah so that's one way or maybe we offer you flexible fare fares right or maybe i offer you fare lock which is our latest offering right where you will lock a fare just by paying a small token amount right yeah and and just keep going down that path right so maybe on the payment page i give you i give you uh, the payment options are stack ranked in a way which i know uh like typically people use right so for example if i know that people typically prefer upi upi would be ranked on top right in just in terms of the ranking of the pay modes also will be basis what is preferred by different users then i can hyper contextualize that and i can say that while in general upi is preferred but anurag prefers credit cards so for you the credit card will be on top right so basically you're trying to minimize the friction as much as possible and not let the cart abandonment happen in first place Yeah. Second part of it is if the card abandonment or the user has dropped midway, what can you do to basically bring him back, right? So two three different channels, throw him a notification, throw him a WhatsApp, throw him an email, throw yeah. throw him uh, every marketing channel, bloody throw him something, right? That is what <laughs> the marketing guys, unfortunately, that's their KPI. And obviously, we personalize the homepage like we said, right? 
So uh, when you come back to the homepage, you will see a very personalized card for that particular sector, that particular date with some specific flight recommendations. So and hopefully we are able to entice you back. Right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and then for specific kinds of user cohorts, for example, uh, uh, the, the, the treatment could be different. And we're still working on it. So for example, for a completely new user, if we card abandoned, maybe I say that, you know what, you can try BNPL also, buy now, pay later, right? And that mm -hmm. way your risk is much, much more minimized, right? So maybe mm -hmm. I push BNPL even more aggressively for a new user, right? Which probably I'm not doing for uh, for maybe a multi-transactor, right? Maybe he dropped off for mm -hmm. a different set of reasons, right? So yeah. that's how you kind of keep iterating. And yeah, so the strategy same, go deeper into your customer segments, try and minimize the friction as much as possible. And in case you were not able to get him to consummate the transaction, then basically try and reach out to him through all the different retargeting channels you have. Maybe even show him a retargeting ad on Facebook, right? Which we have done in the past. Now we don't run retargeting ads, but yeah, if you dropped off, if you went to Facebook, you see the same, exact same thing yeah. that you dropped off from. Got it. So prevent people from dropping off in the first place. If they drop off, reach out to them on every possible channel. Uh, and once they are back, have a personalized journey for them waiting, which yes. Works the best. Yes, even show them a personalized discount that you know what I know you use ICIC cards and uh, this is the ICIC coupon code. Just go ahead and do it. Right? Got it. Um, okay. Um, what has been a challenge that your team has recently faced, and how do you generally navigate these uh, obstacles? Uh, how how big is your team, and like you know what has been like a product related challenge that you guys are? Well, I have six people in my team, uh, so that's how it is. I think uh, the product related challenge is basically twofold, right? Like I said, uh, now, like at least in make matters context, uh, the obvious things are done, right? So you have to keep coming up with more radical ideas and yeah. right, radical ideas get all kinds of reactions, right? Because what happens in, in a typical organization, people are in general risk averse, right? Okay, you are trying to do something like really, really crazy. How is it going to, let's say for example, this fair lock example, right? That, I, I allow the user to fair lock something. And then the standard pushback is, but what if people who were going to actually go ahead and book the entire flight, now you're giving them the fair lock option, some cannibalization would happen, people would share shift to that particular product, right? And whatever you come up with, you will always get a lot of pushback, right? There is always some, uh, uh, like yeah. depending on how the incentives of people are aligned within the organization, people will, would push back, right? Yeah. So the biggest challenge obviously is to make sure that you're able to somehow carve a middle ground or have some weapons in your armory that allows you to push your idea through, get it to execution uh, while trying to sort of minimize the objections that different st important stakeholders in the organization. Have. It's, yeah. it's a huge problem, right? Uh, it, it's a mega problem. Sometimes ideas that I personally believe in that this is going to definitely work. It's a no brainer. It has taken me six months to make sure that all these stakeholders and all the nakshatras and all the planets are aligned favorably. It has something <laughs> right. Uh, just to get that buying has been a six month process, and that is the true test of a PM. Like if you really are passionate about your products, if you are passionate about uh, yeah. about actually making an impact, and if you truly believe that this idea makes sense, you have to do that. You have to pay that tax. There right. is no running away from it. It's like paying income tax, right? So that's right. why. And the second part of it sometimes is uh, again cross team alignment, right? So, so let's say this happens pretty much at every organization. So let's say there's this big project idea that I've come up with, but and that requires me to get support from let's say my flight team, right? No, but flight team obviously have a roadmap of their own, right? Yeah. So, uh, so and and uh, so and the roadmap planning process has ha is happening, and they're saying, boss, we have only so much bandwidth. We are not going to pick your story because uh, your story is not obviously uh, my story is more important to me. Uh, yeah. that's, that's like yeah. obviously <laughs> that's okay. that's human nature, right? That I have come up with my stories. I will rather do my story. So, uh, so, 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 not only do you have to kind of align your exec stakeholders, you also have to align this one to one uh, at your level also, right? So, I am talking to my yeah. peer and trying to convince him, right? And people think that, oh, you now I am the product manager. I will steamroll everyone. It doesn't work that way. Boss, you yeah. have an equal sort of, <laughs> you have to behave like an equal partner to everyone, right? So you have to go, cajole, convince, maybe bribe him, give him a bloody beer, take him out for a beer, whatever it takes. So yeah. even at a peer level, there is a lot of friction that happens and you have to solve for it. Yeah. 
Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna channelize my inner current Johar and throw some rapid fire at you. There is no hamper, unfortunately, at the end. No worries. <laughs> love to know your quick thoughts. Uh, make it rapid and full of fire. Um, sum up your experience of working in Make My Trip in a word or a sentence. Wonderful learning. Okay. What are some product leaders that you look up to? Uh, one of my first bosses, Amit Somani. Touchwood, great guy. Very humble guy. Amazing. Like. He was an ex-Google group product manager. Then he became chief product officer at Make Matter. Worked with him personally. Wonderful guy. Even today, if I call him, he will pick up the phone any single time. Now he's a big, big shot VC. Still, if I call him, a lowly guy like me, if I would call him, he would pick up the phone and give me 30 minutes of advice. One suggestion that you'd like to give to aspiring product managers. Don't get into this uh, world for the sake of high-paying jobs. It's extremely painful. <laughs> Your hair, will, your hair will fall off before you can even imagine, right? So get into it if you truly enjoy this because it might look very glamorous. It is not. It is not glamorous at all when you get in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is one valuable skill for a product manager? A lot of practical sense and pragmatism. A lot of pragmatism, like I said, right? You will keep running into a lot of battles and you have to keep finding out, eking out slices, configurations, that you can somehow work. So you might start with an original idea. You still have to maintain the soul of the idea, but you may have to tweak or modify it a lot to finally get uh, see it, get it to right. see the light. Um, what is your favorite productivity tool? Uh, sorry, favorite <laughs> product? Productivity tool. Oh, productivity tool. Like I said, uh, my note-taking app on my phone. Uh, what is one word to describe your leadership style? Uh, my leadership style is to basically make my team self-sufficient so that so that they don't come and ask me questions and trouble me every single day in uh, long, long meetings, right? So my like my strategy is just in like do it once or like collaborate with them once, let them see, understand the process, and hopefully they become self-sufficient so, so that they don't eat my brain. Uh, what is the favorite app on your phone? I have a I have an app that I absolutely love, which is called Room to Leo. It's it's again a travel app. Obviously, Make My Trip is my favorite app, but beyond Make My Trip, Room to Leo is basically a multimodal, point A to point B, uh, travel uh, sort of discovery platform. It is it has actually helped me save serious bucks, right? So, for example, you put in any anything, right? So, let's say you're trying to travel from let's say Amsterdam to Frankfurt. So, it will give you all the different travel options, right? Take a flight take a bus and then take a tram, take a ferry, right? It, 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 it is really very, very convenient. It's wonderful, right? Uh, and and the, even though they are solving such a complex multimodal point A, any point A to any point B problem, the user interface also is fairly simplistic and intuitive. A lot of other companies are also in the same space, but their funnel doesn't, or their ex product experience doesn't look that sleek. Got it. Uh, three book recommendations for me specifically. Three book recommendations would be, first thing is hard things about hard things. Second thing is uh, thinking fast and slow. These are two my two absolute uh, favorite books. And third book, any good book on user research, maybe uh, don't make me think by, don't, anything on user research design works. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Anurag, thank you. Thank you so much for spending time with us. This was a blast. I absolutely loved uh so your style of general general discussion uh is very similar to how i approach things which gets i'm guessing which gets both of us into a little bit of a trouble but i loved the candid uh approach in which you answered most of the questions i learned a lot and i'm sure like the 200 plus people who are there for a majority of the call learned a lot from you uh very very happy that you are uh like you know giving back to the ecosystem a little bit uh please keep continue uh like you know uh, sharing your stuff or over the weekends. Uh, very, very happy to have you around. Um, couple of quick things for folks who are here. Uh, first, uh, KYS test, uh, give it a shot if you're not already. Uh, second, uh, we run a WhatsApp community uh, for people who are interested to explore product management, flirt with it, understand it better, etc. Uh, the link to that WhatsApp group would be in the chat in, in a while. I'm gonna be, uh, it's called Upskill with Upsc with it's called upskill with appraised. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, launching a poll uh, to help get some feedback. But Anurag, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. It was a blast talking to you. I enjoyed it as much. <laughs>
All right, cool. Uh, once we are done with the polls, uh, we can drop off and go back to our meals. Don't want to keep anyone hangry. Uh, it's already 1.15. All right, cool. Thank you so much, guys. See you around. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Praise Team.